It's all good. It's all good. We don't need to follow your rules. Yeah. When when you're sleeping, I creep into your head. <laughs> and, and then there's... <laughs> he's riding a fox. <laughs> I believe that's true. <laughs> I believe that's true. Factually, fact, that, is, that is fact. That is fact. Welcome to the Dead Zone Podcast. Dead Zone is the sci fi tabletop miniature skirmish game from Mantic Games. And now, here are your hosts, Rob Harper and Jack Fight. I am your announcer, William Randolph Wintergreen. Welcome to the 62nd episode of Dead Zone the Podcast for November 2016. In this episode, we try and brainstorm some new expansions for Dead Zone. As always, you can go to deadzonegame.podbean.com to see all the pictures, or you can go to youtube.com slash c slash deadzonethepodcast for the video version of the show. And now on to the episode. And welcome to the Dead Zone Podcast. This is episode 62. Um, behind us, you can hear uh, the celebrations of Guy Fox Day, <laughs> so please ignore all the fireworks and such. Um, with me today is my ever, ever knowledgeable, esteemed colleague, young Mr. Rob Harper. Yeah, hello. And I'm Jack. And we're here to fill your mushy brain pan full of all manner of information. Information. In all Dead Zone related. Theoretically. In theory. And we are starting with some news, because something big just happened last month, and this is the wrap-up for it. Something big. Oktoberfest, no. <laughs> the Star Saga Kickstarter ended with exactly 3,000 backers. I like that it was exactly 3,000. And 410,198 buckaroos. 400,000 was what you had guesstimated well well in advance of the closing mark. So, again. I'm a guru. You're a, a guru. And, uh, yeah. You're a Luke guru. In the end, lots of stuff with the game. Tons of characters. Let's see, with miniatures you get Captain Erica Dolinsky, uh, Wrath Kirby, Elise Francisco the Devil Salvaggio, Ogun Hellcar, that's the, uh, the uh, dwarf. Two Sentry Guns, two Force Field Generators, a Guard Commander, Guard Commander Braves, I guess his name is. That's a whole lot of stuff right there. I'm looking, are we going to name everything? Because that is a big pile. Yep, just lots of stuff. We got the uh, Chovar, Dr. Lucas Coyer, Monarch, which is the, I guess he's a bad guy. He's the Enforcer guy. Of course he is. I guess so. Monarch. The Monarch. (laughs) And uh, the Minions are with the Monarch. All right. Lots 21? Of yep, 21, 17, no. Lots of them, plus you get the character expansion creator, mission expansions, tons of bonus items, including an aberration, uh, a whole a whole uh, nameless group. That's what I've, that's what's making my, uh, my nethers tingle. I don't think we talked about the nameless, because we never got a chance. I think it never came out when we were talking about it. No, it was a last minute edition, because I would have, uh, foisted over. I would have peeled back a couple of the, uh, the greenbacks out of my wallet, and, uh, cause they look, the last time we talked, I told you they looked like the, uh, creatures from, um, uh, the, the ones looked from, like the creatures from the Dark Crystal. Yes, they, what were they called? I can't remember. We figured the name. They, they're giant, like, uh, crab lake guys. Yeah, it starts with a G. Um, and, uh, yeah, they look, they look aquatic y. Like, I, I'm looking forward to painting them. Yep. We've had some experience because usually Wrath of Kings, uh, what are they called? Uh, Hadros. Yeah, they're, uh, I forget what they're, they're called in, in Wrath of Kings, but they're just big crab people, and I really like painting them, I really like the way, that's what I'm looking forward to, that is what, uh, if, if nothing else, I wouldn't mind taking one or two of those guys and, uh, give yep. them a little, uh, give, giving them the carapace once over. And also more Pathfinders, uh, more, st- the new Stage 3, uh, Plague Stage 3s, and more st- the zombies! Zombies. We have so many zombies. Uh, you know, it, we might be handing out zombies at uh, Adepticon. Look for us at Adepticon, just handing out zombies. Here you go, sir. Have a zombie. And uh, there's also some painted stuff from it. We got the uh, Asterian uh, leader from a Warpath. This is from a Warpath, and uh, it's Tenergu. He's like a new Asterian leader. 
he would make a good uh, the 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 current leader right now, like the just the Cipher Prime, the Cipher Prime, because with the sword and stuff, like an alternate sculpt of, of that. I like I like the pose. I like the the stand. The sword's cool. I really, how they painted it too is very cool. Yes, yes, because uh, he's, he's 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 perched. They like to perch those Asterians. I know, it's dangerously perched. And then from uh, the Star Saga, we got Salvaggio all painted up, all burned face and all. He's cool. And then there's Salvaggio about to burn some plague. <laughs> cool base, too. I think that's the uh, the the uh, nice painted up bases there they did. And yeah, pa- some... painted in, like, to, to match the Star Saga, the, the train that they had. Obviously, that's been painted by a professional as well. Security guards. I like how the security guards look. They look very security guard-like, not like Marines and not like Enforcers or anything, or play or Rebs or anything. No, no. Yeah, the closest you could say is uh, maybe they've got a full corporation flair in some of the other uh, the, uh, the, the uniform areas, but it look they look like uh, corrections officers. Yeah, a little bit with their hats. Yeah. So there you go. That's a uh, Star Saga is over. We're waiting for Warpath Kickstarter to come, and we're waiting with bated breath. And that should be any time now. So by the tech- next episode, theoretically, we'll have that to uh, talk about. Maybe even do a, a Crackle Crackle unboxing. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Both possibly in the same location. I know the last unboxing we did for that taster pack, we were at two locations. The sound the, quality, not great, but... Well, that kind of worked because I was able to uh, mute some of the Crackle Crackle in your end. So. And you lived... The, 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 you at home, uh, you sitting on your Chesterfields and uh, perhaps uh, commuting to work, you you lived vicariously through Rob, who also couldn't exactly see what was going on. And, and I couldn't touch things and caress them and, and lick, I lick think, them. Ironically, I think it's the first unboxing in which it hadn't been previously unboxed by uh, my co-host. <laughs> Before I, I didn't sneak into your house and unbox it first. The, the pre-unboxing is is kind of a it's it's a tradition almost it at is. this point. It is. Fortunately, you broke tradition. Yes. Faster. Anyways, we'll be right back after a mantic ad, and we'll see you then. You have been listening to the Dead Zone podcast with your hosts Jack Fike and Rob Harper. The Dead Zone Podcast is dedicated to Dead Zone, the tabletop miniature game by Mantic Games. Visit them at manticgames.com. Hey, this is Community Pat, and you are listening to Rob and Jack on Dead Zone, the podcast. And we're back. Now we have a... It's almost getting back to normal days now. We have to think of things to talk about because uh, we're in between stuff. I think we got plenty. I think we we have a, a, a plethora of things. Not only are are, uh, are we in the Manta community with Coach and and, and and having discussions about building teams and Et all that stuff, but we, we're also you know we're also playing like Mad Men, and you know we got we got an active uh, Dead Zone social life. So let's talk about. Uh, expansions and models and things we want to see in the future. Future, like, things we'd love to see. Do you have things that you'd want to see in the future? <sighs> expansions into Dead Zone? I would say, if, if we're not counting Warpath being transitioned into Dead Zone, if, if that's off the table. Cause well, I'm, I'm saying, like, actually, like Nexus Eye or Infestation. Or... I think we have enough, we have enough factions. Well, we need GCPS is the last faction we we're, need. We're, we're, we're already starting to double up on some oh, of and the nameless, nameless we're skill get. sets. <laughs> oh, yeah, the nameless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm but gonna... factions, well, I'm thinking more expansions like other planets, maybe, like a, maybe an ice planet. Like Hoff? Yeah, like a like you get a snowboard with... <laughs> a snowboard? <laughs> Radical. Uh, you know, like a smor- snow mat with maybe uh, they could s- sell some... Uh, Snow terrain, or actually even terrain ideas. Any terrain ideas you have? We were talking about before, uh, like either yeah. Forge Fathers. We thought that'd be cool to make, because uh, so far all the terrain has been human, ba- like a uh, corporation based. But maybe like a Forge Fathers one with all a Battle Zones set that had uh, like a stone facade that you could use for interiors, or uh, you you had mentioned like an Asterian one that had like curves and more stuff curvy yeah. that you could build. Outs, like, build a different type buildings than the ones we're accustomed to. But as as for a setting, um, I would be more interested because a lot of people like the campaign books and the stuff that involved in the fluff, and it, it's not necessarily for me. Um, if you were to have a world 
like a, I would want you to a visit one of the races we already know and the Indish homeworld. The it's like jungly, jungly, because that was in uh, one of the dread uh, uh, dreadball games, Azure Azure Four or something like that is the one. I think that was the Indish homeworld, and that was like jungly and you know your stuff. That's a deep cut. Like I just, I I'm just a professional. You are. <laughs> I oh believe it's called, the, the expansion was called Azure Four or something like that. It is now Azure Forest. I think it is. But uh, yeah, yeah, jungles, jungles would be interesting. Uh, GW just did their Lost Patrol, which was in a jungle. Do you think that people would wrongly claim that they're just ripping that off? Uh, I'm not part of the social zeitgeist. You would probably know the the reaction of, well, I know what you would say, all the whiny bitches from all four corners. <laughs> I know that's... And I know what you would say. You'd say, big deal. Big deal. <laughs> so, I'm not worried. Um, yeah, but it'd be like tree forts, fighting in tree forts. Like a little Ewoki. Ewoki, yeah. And, not not uh, Jabberwocky. That would be totally different. And we get a new Yindish, uh leader or something for it. Yeah. Elite list. An uh, elite list with the, a Yindish on the Yindish homeworld and maybe whatever whatever infestation is plaguing them. Eric Pamir, the Yindish, the uh, Merc, he doesn't have a elite list yet, right? I don't think so. He wasn't in either of the books, I don't think. So, yeah, he's right there waiting. Yeah, so that's that's what I would like to see. Source material. Um, bring back to Sword Spawn. That's the Sorak, though. Are they from the same planet? Are they? I don't know. I wouldn't think so. They look more uh, deserty. I would think Soraks are from the desert. I'm yeah, not sure. that's that's a good question. It is a good question. Someone answer that question. Are Soraks and Yindish from the same planet? And then it'd be like it could be though. It could be they. Could and be. I think and maybe Marauders or something. Rebs and Marauders because they those two don't don't get an expansion yet. We have Enforcers. Yeah. And the Forge Plague. Fathers have been. Uh, and Forge Fathers really haven't had an expansion. Not a, not like that. Because uh, uh, it was it was Enforcers play. It was Pathfinders. In, Enforcers got it twice because they got yeah. Pathfinders and uh, Veermen, and then the uh, and the Pathfinders fighting zombies in. in so the, Marauders on a rebel. R- R- Marauders, Rebels on a jungle terrain. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. And then, yeah, do Forge Fathers be... You could do Forge Fathers and Asterians. That'd be a natural mix. And uh, I would think that one would be snow. That'd be like Forge Fathers in the snow. Asterians invading a Forge Father world or something. Because they are, are of a, uh, like a Nordic Viking yeah, type that's people. That's how I so. Yeah, and they got all the halters and they... Yeah. You know, yeah. So there's, there's room to expand. And is there any models that we don't currently have... That you're into new mercs or something that you think's not missing. I, I, I think I've already said the the, the nameless are what, yeah, what course, I, I think yeah. we're missing in particular. But Star Saga is kind of bringing them in. Yeah, they're bringing them in. But if it's just a a throwing it out there, the Veermen need work. Well, obviously, but that's we'll talk about that later when we talk about our battle reports. But. Oh, okay. So you're just talking about like a particular model, not necessarily a new. No, not a new race. I'm thinking, yeah, it's model, not like, a race, but like a. a I was something the whole to fill package. out. Yeah, fill out. Like, well, obviously, we need uh, rev snipers. Don't have a model yet. Things like that. But I'm thinking more, maybe so, even mercs, because mercs would be the ones that you get solo models. Unless you want to, unless they want to start adding actual new units to. Until they they make the mercs. Until they they fix them in merc book, new merc book. Bring yeah. them into version two. Well, even f- finish them for version one, then update them for version two. Um, yeah. No. Really? No. You're right. The the Rebs need it. Their sniper. Now that they've made the items different than the p- models, like it's not, they're going to have to start offering some stuff. Maybe like a... Because there is no hard plastic Rebs yet. The Rebs never got the hard plastic treatment, like, because uh, they're not in Warpath, so they never got that. So if you need to get like a Rebs package with a bunch of weapons options. Yeah. And not, not so not all your humans look like Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or the Winter Soldier. Yep. You know what? Maybe a new dwarf militia. Yeah, we need those. We have the old ones from Warpath, but they're a they're, they're like really different scale. When I I put them next to the other ones, they look really small. They're 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 they're, they're like halflings. They are. They're, they're from the Shire. Oh, gnomes! Dwarves need some gnomes. Put little cone hats on there. <laughs> you love your you know, riding a gnomes. fox. Have we talked this about this already. <laughs> I seem to have deja vu. <laughs> when, when you're sleeping, I creep in your head. <laughs> and and <then> there's, <laughs> he's riding a fox. I believe that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's true. Factually, fact, that, is, that is fact. That is fact. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Dwarves, the militia definitely need updating. 
Once again, hard plastic. They need hard plastic. Motion. And I only mention that because we're doing the next team building exercise is going to be the dwarves. dwarves. Yeah. And I've done my research and not only can you not feel too many of those l- little stumpy bastards, but it's, it's pretty slim pickings. Well, if, 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 I, if I have for the models that we have for me to, to field something, like, yeah, I could, well, well it's, I could brock out with my cock out. Don't get me wrong. Well, we only don't have many brockers actually. Brockers are something we don't have much. But I would like to see the militia in modern. New, yeah, modernized, yeah. yeah. And well, I, what about you? I, alternate sculpts for most things, like just to have a different variety of things. Or, or once again, hard plastic treatment where you can make your own variety. Like, I recently uh, think that, well, I'll talk about it. Edit that one out. <laughs> so we'll talk about a different episode. Uh, prank caller, prank caller. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, hard plastic for most things. Anything that doesn't have hard plastic right now, they need them. But... Yeah, variety and sculpts, just different. Like, that's why the Pathfinders are cool. They got a lot of different, like, you can do different yeah. standing, crouched, guys with hoods, guys without hoods, bold women, and nice variety there. So I think the uh, the Rebs are lacking in the variety. There is no, the only girl is the leader, I think. Oh, and the Terratons, because <laughs> they're girls. And, yeah. But the only human-looking female is the leader. You're a fan of a strong female... Uh... Well, at least get some variety in sculpts, right? Yeah. It's just different stuff. And dwarves, who knows? They could be all girls. Dwarves, women have beards, I hear. And, uh, well, one day you'll see one. A dwarf woman? A woman's beard. And that we had to do it, too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Why, why did we become a swarthy... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I became a Frenchman there for a second. <laughs> but, yeah. So, yeah, hard plastic things. I don't know. What else are we thinking? Other alien races? Yeah, Crystallins. It's it's one of those things that I know is being addressed because of Star Saga already. So it, my wish list is pretty much being fulfilled as we speak. That's true. There's a lot of variety there. See, it's a problem with it's hard to. I don't want a new faction, like you say, but I do it. I would like additions to other factions. If we get a new faction, it has to be vastly different. Well, obviously, we're going to get nameless. Handled. Nameless and GCPS are definitely in the yeah. working. Like that's we know that's going to happen. I'm hoping the GCPDS uh, GSC. <laughs> uh, they, they, I hope they turn into uh, they they turn into the median stat line, yeah, and well, the enforcers can get go pushed up a bit, get returned to a, more of an elite uh, fighting force, nice. and the nameless, even if they're not, it's going to be hard to make the nameless not like the plague, right? They were going to be very similar because it's they're both like or a nameless more biological weapons like like not. Are you speciesist? Because they could uh, doff their caps thusly, uh, have a monocle, and why hello? Well, so far the pictures we've seen mm-hmm. of them, they look just that's just the that's just the like. cover that's just the cover of the they book. They play dreadball. They play dreadball and stuff. They're obviously and the, what's his name is uh, I I hope they're who's well, Oberon. Oberon is a merc. I hope they're well learned. He wears clothes. I hope they have a penchant. For that's why I hope because the ones they show in the for the Star Saga are all like clothesless monsters. I hope they're not like that. I hope they're like. Intelligent. Because Oberon's intelligent, and the Dreadball guys are super intelligent. Yeah. And more psychics. I think we need more psychics. I think the one of the nameless got to be a psychic. So, so psychics, uh, that has to be improved, the psychicness in general. The rules are pretty, like, everyone's got the same powers. Yeah, stuff. more powers, yeah. Yeah, I, I would just like that streamlined a little bit, but that's we're, now we're getting way off topic. That's, yeah, it's more rules. So We're thinking expansions. Yeah. We're definitely a Merc's book we want, So we, and they've already announced that. We're going to have, Ronnie said it many times, we want a Merc's book so you can make Merc factions. and To make a Merc faction would be... Pretty snaz, but hopefully not too powerful. Just to have the stats there, so that you can make uh, scenarios, you can make you know mix stuff up. But yeah, but definitely fix the points and fix the abilities in some of them, like like they've done with Doctor Simmons. But even then, as a merc, she's useless. She's good as a leader now. Yeah, her st- her, her her stat line. Uh, she, but to take her as a merc, I don't see the point. No, her stat line doesn't make her. T- uh, a choice pick her, now having a uh, hair as a, uh, but that does come back stuff and, that comes back to us always saying that there's her heroes and then there's mercs yeah she's her like uh they're always the heroes the uh the, for, the forge father guys who only work for forge father but, so if anyone at mantic's listening uh those th- those are some free ideas that's right there is please no, use them th- what they're free. So they okay, can yes. Yeah, we don't even, like, at no point am I just going to... I don't even want credit. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to... Because then people just bitch at us. 
Hey, you're the one who said that uh, the nameless had to wear top hats, right? I didn't say they had to. <laughs> Why the hell like, monocles now? <laughs> you're stupid. The coach is yelling at you? Is that your coach impression? That was not my coach impression. <laughs> but anyways, yes, so... Yeah, different expansions. I also would love to see a space station with a 4 by 4 board with an actual space station, indoor rules, no rules about, you know, yeah, yeah, search yeah, yeah. rules, like we've we've invented our search rules. Yeah, we, we, we bodged, you know, we bodged our own together. But it, I'd love to see a mat that's in inside in a space station, make some rules for it, have the Veermen in there attacking or something, and or anything, an outbreak, like even like a zombie on a space station outbreak would be fun. or or uh, eventually they'll bring the Zor in, I'm sure. They can be like an alien from the movie Alien Substitute. Yeah, I'm not as familiar with the Zor lore, the Zor lore, uh, <laughs> in, in the game itself, obviously. I don't, I know they're in Dreadball, and I know that the, the, the... And they look like insects. They, they kind of look like the b- bugs, but uh, do they fill the xenomorph? No, I think they're more intelligent than that. I think, well, I think they're more like the Starship Trooper bugs. Well, hello. I'm Azor. I'm adjusting my monocle for sleep. Oh, a nameless. Good, good day, Cheer, sir. Cheerio, old chap. Chip, chip. Uh, no, like, you know how we're in, uh, Starship Troopers, there was a brain bug and he controlled them. I think it's more like that. Oh, okay. And one of the brain bugs must be really into Dreadball. He just plays Dreadball. <laughs> he sends out his source to play Dreadball. Hey, if I, if I was, uh, all powerful, all knowing, uh, Bugs are, uh, that's what I would do is make them play sports. Although I think there's an impl- I think they, I don't know if they're the ones, maybe it's a nameless that, or maybe it's all of them that they implied that they're clones or like fake. They're not real. I, uh, uh which one is it that they, s- I think the Hysterians, they say they're just. Yeah, the, 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 uh, they, cause they're like, look like Kalishi, but they're not actually there. Yeah, because it would mess they're with They're just the- humans dressed up like <laughs> Hysterians. Genetically or, modified yeah. clones or something. Yeah. So. Well, they're all, also in the in the lore. There is a uh, human looking look, just like human robots, like replicants that in the stories. Because remember that one short story? There's that that replicant that comes and visits the. Yes. So there is the yes. there is robots in in the story. It's Westworld. She she drops a can of uh, condensed milk, and then uh, someone picks it up. Then the nameless picks it up and says, "Good day, sir." <laughs> <laughs> Madam, you have dropped your condensed milk. <laughs> yes. It is Westworld. They 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 built Westworld into they pre built. It's not like they invented it. No, but replicants slash slash Westworld robots are already existing in the Mantic universe. It is it is it is a fact. Fact. And uh, yeah, well, I think that that uh, we went over some expansions there. Nice little. We just riffed a little on. Uh, to- if you guys have any ideas, please post below. Post on the Facebooks. Post in the. The old, the old, uh, YouTubes. Find me on Growler. Uh, I'm afraid to ask. And, uh, it, it's like Grinder, but for bears like myself. Ew. I'm sorry to, ew, your, uh, lifestyle choice. <laughs> wow. Close minded much? <laughs> and, uh, we do have a Facebook group. Go on, uh, Dead Zone the Podcast on Facebook. Find us there. You can post on there. Please, interact. There's lively discussions. You're not you're not going to be disappointed if you want to hear some opinions. Well, that's definitely in the WGC or the uh, Dead Zone or the the Dead Zone fanatics. There's there's opinionated people in there, including Coach. <laughs> what what what? <laughs> coach has an opinion. <laughs> Please listen to the last team building exercises to hear Coach's opinions. <laughs> they may not reflect out Dead Zone the podcast. <laughs> But they do in that they case. They do in that case, yeah. In, in, in that particular instance, it is dead on, uh, follow, toes to the line exactly. But there you go. We'll be back. We'll talk about some other things, including a battle report and what we've been up to when we're back from this ye old commercial. Make sure to listen to this commercial very carefully. Inside of it is hidden some codes for Steam. <laughs> we're not sure... He doesn't mean the the computer program Steam. He literally means Steam in his shower. Yes, yes. The state, it talks to him. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the water in a certain state at a certain temperature. It's temperature. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking. I've been drinking. <laughs> it's time to enter the strike zone. <laughs> <laughs>
The Strike Zone Podcast is the ultimate guide to the miniature sports game, Dreadball. From the ringside seats of an underground Dreadball Extreme match to the glitz and glamour of Dreadball Classic, the Strike Zone strives to bring you the latest and greatest Dreadball has to offer. I am your host, Adam, a.k.a. Mr. Voxman, and you can find out more at warmoreradio.com. Welcome back to the Dead Zone Podcast. Now for a segment we call Our Stuff. Welcome back to this show of Dead Zone Podcast 62. It is now November. Where's our Kickstarter? Yes, well, what should have been uh, a, a October in our greasy hands. No, it was originally September. Well, we knew that was a pipe dream. <laughs> but October was when I thought maybe. But you're supposed to think the earliest date possible, so January. That was not for this <laughs> oh, particular Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Uh, and I think my boyish enthusiasm, my my, you know, joy de vivre, yeah, was kind of was kind of tainted by the last one. Uh, so I I was willing to give. I was going to say, okay, September. No, you you take a take a month. You just 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 you know October if you could please. Now it's November. Yeah. But we have other things to work on. I did paint up a hund or a rin nomad. I think it's a hund. The hund is the MVP or MVP Merc because he's got the sniper rifle, I believe, and the two guns, I think. So I painted him up. Yes. I made him all deserty. Yes. And I also uh, painted up my dwarf bikers I got from that uh, Kickstarter I was going to use for my Forge Fathers. And I did them in the classic. All metallic, and I do like their beards. The one guy's got like a nice handlebar mustache. He does have uh, quite quite the, uh, the the waxed and quaffed mustache. So they're pretty fun. They're they're. Uh, I don't know if they're even going to be available on his website. If he just did it for the uh, Kickstarter, but uh, I do like them. They are the Apocalyptic Dwarf Bikers, which are now my Forge Fathers on. What are the bikes called? What are the Forge Fathers motorcycles called? Some. Name that is slightly Viking. <laughs> Some name that is slightly Viking. That's the name of their bikes. They're on the Olafs. They're on the Svens. Yes. Not to be confused with the IKEA, uh, the, the, the the occasional table. Is that the Sven? That is the Sven. And what have you been up to, Jack? I from the taster box, we got uh, some 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 models. Uh, a little smattering of this, and a little touch of that. And so before the um, the Kickstarter was to arrive, I thought I'd better uh, knock out some of those. So I painted a um, a Yiddish. Is he the correct color? Yes, a little darker than uh, than the other ones we had. But purple. He, he, I, I made him dirtier. Yeah, he's purple, obviously. Because uh, ah. all Yindish are purple. Obviously. He's a little dirtier. Uh, yeah, he, I made him a little scruffier. Uh, I painted a sword. Does he have like a f- five o'clock shadow on a Yindish? Uh they don't use a time in the way that you understand. <laughs> the, the concept does he have? A, it's laughable that someone does would he even... have three quarters past the tree branch on it. <laughs> yes, yes, he does. See, see, you're not as species as everyone says. Um, it's my uh, enforcer upbringing. Is that? Is that? Is that why they programmed it into me? I can't help myself. Yeah. I'll tell Tyler the tree branch. Get over here, monkey boy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mushy boy. That reminds me of Buckaroo Bonsai. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Monkey boy. Anyways, uh, you did a Yindish. <laughs> a Yindish. Uh, a, a swarthy Yindish. A swarthy, uh, yeah. Just it, it looks much like John Lithgow, too. I'll, they all do, don't they? And is his name John? Is uh, his name John Big Boutet? Yes, it is. Excellent. Um, what else did you do? <laughs> Uh, I did a um, a guy who looks like Kurgan, uh, but he's uh, he dies. Oh, he's and, shot in the back. And yeah, and a guy in a white trench coat, uh, oh, blonde pretty? hair. Oh, he's he's perfect. <laughs> he is perfect. No, none of that was true either. <laughs> and for anyone who doesn't know Buckaroo Bonds, I apologize. Go watch. It's the best movie ever. Mm, that's no. It made me the man I am today. It did. Um, uh, what else did you paint, really, though? <laughs> what did I really paint? A Sorak, 
which so, uh, I really enjoyed painting him. I made him crouching. I really played around. The thing is, we have all the models already that we yeah, they're had extras. They're, they're extras, so you're you just could, kind of like messing around. With them. You can you can go a little a little on the outsides. You can make them look a little different. You can pose them different. You can. There's no real risk. So, anyways, I did a, a Sorak. He used red uh, because that's the color of Sorak. All Sorak, uh, right. except for a sword spawn. They could be green. Well, they're a different race. There is no sword spawns anymore, anyways. Oh well, they could suck my. Then Georgie isn't in this one. Is he? <laughs> no. Oh, then that that's mm. <laughs> overboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I'm back to being sweaty. Um, I painted, I painted the Sorak, the the Yindish. I made a goblin sniper who's oh, standing, right. and I made I painted him. He's cool. You used how'd you do that? Explain your methodology for your goblin standing goblin sniper. Uh, the package comes with the standing sniper, and there's another one that was the crouching sniper. We like to call the standing one prancing. Okay, uh, Georgie the prancing goblin, his legs are in such a way that he's upright. The other goblin uh, who is kneeling, but crouched, yeah, named down his gun gun. Which you know, like uh, w- 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 you're either prone, kneeling, or standing. I understand, but. The goblin kneeling means he doesn't see past anything. Yeah, he's so short, you can't see nothing. <laughs> and we already have like a, a, a plethora of those. So I cut them both in half, and I put the uh, aiming sniper type goblin t- top torso on top of the legs of p- the prancing goblin. And it turned out amazing. And then I just m- used the prancing legs, like hot water treatment, and I made him standing on something. So now he's kind of a standing he doesn't look like he's dancing. He's more like standing and shooting. Yes. He looks good. And is that everything? Yeah, I think so. I can't remember. I I can't remember either. Because the last time we got together, we just started playing Dead Zone, and that was it. We just went to town. So, yeah, I, I think of of the – like, I, 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 I base-coded some forcers. Yeah. Did you fin- you finish it? Oh, we did that last time, I think. We talked about the enforcers. You finished. The- I think you did forces and Fearman or something. I think we talked about that last time. Yeah, it could be. No one cares. No one cares. Uh, I-, I I know I did more, but I can't remember what it is. So. We'll get back to it. There's more podcasts to come. Even yeah. though we threaten that this will be the last one, it's never going to be the last one. You keep promising me. You keep saying this is the last one. Uh, yeah, but and it's never going to happen. I I just I just pray for death every day, and then. There's another Dead Zone podcast, and it, it lightens your spirit. It, it makes me, I want to schluff off this mortal coil so bad, and you're just like, no, I need you. I need you. Oh, no. Who's going to whisper about gnomes in your sleep? In this? <laughs> well, as a ghost, you'll do that, and that'll be even scarier. There's no such thing as ghosts. Yes, tell that to me when you're whispering in my ear when you're dead. <laughs> you were right the whole time. I mocked you for your beliefs. <laughs> hey, you're a sanctimonious asshole in death, aren't you? <laughs> no, no, it hurts. If I had a heart, it would be broken. <laughs> right here. <laughs> oh. And that's the day I learned ghosts could cry. <laughs> that's the name of his autobiography. <laughs> the, the, the day I learned ghosts could cry? Yeah. Anyways, uh, would you uh, like to do a shout out just to the uh, WCG WGC uh, Dead Zone group on Facebook, the WYRK in Cincinnati Facebook group? Uh, to come on there, join the conversation, and uh, also there's a map on there of locations for all the fans of Dead Zone, not the podcast, but just Dead Zone itself. So you don't have to. You don't have to claim that you're a fan of us, but you can be a fan of Dead Zone. Go on there. You can distance yourself from us quite. Like, yeah. yeah we, we, you can we, put we, notes like, I I put this on here because I do not like Dead Zone the podcast. Yeah, I would not blame you. Hashtag podcast for wankers. <laughs> podcast for wankers. <laughs> that's the name of your autobiography. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's true. But anyways, uh, you can go on there. And uh, put a pin in the map so we we do want to see where everybody's from. It's a it's a live and it discussion. also it also get people if you put a pin in there maybe other people will see that and say hey there's players in my area and you can find people to play. So we'll take another break. We'll come back and we'll we'll talk about our epic games we had. We do a, a battle report. It's been a while. And this ad is a new one uh, from uh, the makers of uh, a, a brand of iced tea that I, I personally enjoy. So please uh, listen and, and and purchase said iced tea. Uh, we, you know, we'd appreciate it. 
That was a test uh, endorsement. This is actually just a uh, Family Gamers Club <laughs> ad. Oh. oh. Test iced tea when you have a hankering for ice and or tea. <laughs> OG Andrew and the coach here, and we would like to tell you about our YouTube channel, Family of Gamers 777. Family of Gamers covers the hobby from topics like airbrushing, painting, building, converting, unboxings, interviews, and much, much more. We go over in depth tactics and battle reports of games like Dead Zone, Warhammer 40k, X Wing, Kings of War, and Wild West Exodus. So go over to Family of Gamers 777 on YouTube and become part of the family. Welcome back to Coaching Friends, and today I'm joined with Roberto and Jake. <laughs> we now present to you a Dead Zone Battle Report. Welcome back. Wasn't that a great iced tea ad? It was. We, we'll take ads. We, we will sell out in a second, people. Oh, oh God, yes. Oh, we, we, we will dance. We will... Shuck and jive. <laughs> we will turn this into a minstrel show <laughs> so fast for some of the sweet, sweet greenbacks. Oh, Isn't that iced tea money. The stuff we would do. I, I don't cut pepperidge farms. Um, if, if, if you're a kill shelter and you just, you know, you know, I will put aside any of my beliefs, any of my, any things that I hold dear, I will discard immediately for enough money. So, you know, just. Be aware of that. <laughs> yes, everyone just. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we had to, we had a battle report, and it was uh, we were testing Veerman because uh, we did the Veerman team building exercise, and afterwards we're like, they can't be as bad as we said. Yeah, yeah, we knew we, we, just looking at their stats, we knew they were subpar, and we, we like right off the hop, we were kind of like, yeah, they're not great. Man. But once you get them on the board, things show up, and you're like, oh yeah, okay, this is this is why they work. Yeah, and some of the things I thought, okay, would work, coach was like, that's not going to, and then it, it all came out in the wash. It was. So we'll talk about our first game. It was uh, Jack playing Veerman. Yep. And I was playing the Astarians. Yes, yeah, Space Elves. And uh, let's just say the Astarians with the Kalishi as the, the troops and yep. the uh, Pulse Bombard. Yeah. The Astarians did some Astarian. Yep. That's for sure. That's why they, they used to be. Astarians, as in they are ass. Now they're Astarians. <laughs> ass terrorists, because they. Yeah. Yeah. I think the game lasted two turns, if that. Uh, I, I will say uh, that uh, we were playing by our special uh, Dead Zone, the podcast, uh, drinking game rules. And I was playing by the George Thorogood rules. That meant uh, if a uh, Veerman went down like a, like a cowardly bitch, uh, I had to drink uh, for one Veerman. It was one shot and one beer. Uh, as obviously that's the George Soros good rules. Everyone knows that. Uh, I was blotto by, but the, yeah, because the first round, pulse bombard, range eight, blew up his Veerman on their starting block before they got to move. And after that, first game, the Veerman didn't take a shot. One Veerman got to my leader. Remember, uh, within combat range, yeah. one eventually snuck through. But it was it was a, such a pasting. Well, you tr- you did uh, you did try to kill a couple uh, Kalishi, but you just whiffed and they missed and they just murdered everyone. Yeah, Kalishi. I think I had four Kalishi. They just went out and they just did what they do. But they they are the go to troop for the Asterians. Like you didn't you didn't pull any punches. At well, no point were you like, let's. Well, let's... this was the first game I've ever won of Dead Zone 2.0. That that is true. It took you being drunk playing the uh, Veerman, but I, I wasn't drunk to start with. But I, I got there. I got there. So yeah, the Veerman, uh, the, the Asterians, they overpowered them quite quickly. I, I did have, uh, one Pulse Bombard and two Plasma Vortexes. So anytime hit, uh, Veerman popped its head out, the Plasma Vortex shot them, and they, and then even when they didn't pop their heads out, <laughs> the Pulse Bombard was yeah. landing on them. And then the, yeah. And then the Kalishi just mopped up. Per, per, pretty with, uh, without. No, I didn't lose models. Yeah, yeah, I never lost one model. And I think I, I, I actually tabled you. I think I didn't table you because I think you had your leader left. And we just called it. <laughs> yeah, because we were we were looking, we were play testing. So like, the, the point wasn't to see like uh, the epic struggles of one guy uh, left on the board. It was okay. This is this was a 
a complete wash, so let's move on. Yeah, so the Asterians destroyed the Veermen pretty handily, so we're like, okay, maybe it's just the Asterians. They're very powerful now. They're one of the best races. Yes. So, we second game, it was a Jack Lee Veermen still. Yep. And I took the Rebs, because the Rebs, you know, they just got improved recently. And uh, this game, a little closer, slightly. I think you, you did kill quite a few Yindish with your uh, Veermen. It wasn't the Veermen, though. It was the grenades I had given the Veermen. Yeah, you did. Well, that was against. I had I had three rebel snipers, I believe, in that army, and you did use the grenades to stop the snipers just from murdering you. Yes, <laughs> which didn't help because it just got back up and murdered you. But <laughs> yes, uh, again, like the Veermen, the ranges are so terrible and their stats are so terrible that base troops cannot bring. That they're not in line with the rest of the troops. But also, I had a Maligny and I had the, the um, nightmare with the drill. With the, uh, I think I took the two drills. Yep, two drills, yeah. Even the Nightmare with the two drills is not as good as a comparable... Well, I had a, t- a Rebel Terraton, and that Rebel Terraton just kept teleporting into people, killing them, teleporting yeah, into people, killing yeah. them. And the only person I was afraid of, you had one of your, your grenade launcher guys hiding in a building, and my t- Rebel Terraton just went doot, 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 right there and finished him off, and that was pretty much your only chance of doing damage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they the the Veermen fall short in every category, and I'm not saying they have to be. They're not competitive, and I don't think it, not all the factions have to be competitive. Oh, I, I think they do. I will play Veermen again because I like them. They, they, they don't have a, a a feel yet. They if if they just adjusted the feel that made it something that if that was your play style and you enjoyed that, that's fine. They don't need to be competitive, but they're not. Right now. They're not competitive in the least, because it was not even, like, it was, I had a Grogan with, finally a Grogan lived through a game, and he was just mowing people down, too. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, again, it was it was a fish in a barrel. Um, I, my grenades were surprises that uh, I, I'd I grouped up my snipers so that you were able to grenade them off, but I don't think they even died, they just got back up. No, uh, I, uh, I think they were, the grenades were a pleasant surprise, and uh, I, I, I'm not going to say that it's the only thing that did any damage, but I don't. Bl- I think I might have got one shot off before I was tabled again. Uh, well, mostly it was. I think you had some stalkers who came in, and I kept trying to hold objectives, and you kept running in and killing Yindish. And it, they, they were the stalkers are just as good as a Yindish with a. I think I gave him combat blades, so it was a good fight. But yeah. you kept going in and killing my Yindish that were shooters, so they didn't have any weapons really in, and. Uh, I, I, in the end, it was the Terraton, the Snipers, and the Grogan that did all the damage on my side. At one point, I think it was this game, that you rolled so many eights that I had to go make myself a double martini and <laughs> chug it out of disgust. <laughs> I think that was that game. I think it was the end of the last game, actually, with the Asterians. When the you tried to game? kill my leader, I think that's when it was just okay. like eights. I, I just literally had to, to yeah. walk away and... Uh... So we play a third game. Yes. And we're like, Veermen are going to win this game. One way or the other, Veerman are going to win this game. Because we played Veerman versus Veerman. Yes. <laughs> and it wasn't true, neither, because we never finished the game. We had to walk away. <laughs> there, we, the writing was so on the wall, we just, we're like, let's get some pizza. And what happened was every time a, any either of us sent a Veerman into a fight, we'd run up a guy into a fight, that Veerman would die. Never failed. The Veerman would run in, and he'd get killed. So we entered a, we, we created a new verb called Veermaning. Yes. If, if you rush in hand-to-hand... Whomever it is on the other side of that, I don't care if it's a Chovar psychic. <laughs> I, I don't care if it's a goblin sniper. I don't care if it's a, a if it's a rebel drone. Yep. Use your fight stat to go back because you will kill the, the attacker, <laughs> and that's vermining. Every time it, we just it, the only two people that died in that fight were people who charged in and tried to fight the other guy, and they yep. just get killed. And I think I had a tangle, and you knocked my tangle over. I, I did suppress your tangle in the first time that my, I was able to get a, a shot off uh, with with a, uh, a a weapon that wasn't the grenade launcher. No, I didn't even think I got the. I might have shot the grenade launcher once. I think you did because didn't you shoot into your square with your own guy? I think I did. And then he was hiding. You were hiding your leader in a building, and you sent me a sneaky pic of him. I took a picture of my leader hidden in the building, and I, and I was like, "Yeah, he, I'll, he'll get this days later." When, when he gets this, I'll have already sprung my trap. And he took his uh, nightmare and dumped him into the building <laughs> on top of him. I was like, "Oh, he didn't even see the picture yet." <laughs> so when he got the picture, he's like, "Oh yeah, that guy I'm beaten on. Thanks." <laughs> So yeah, Veermen, not they are. We've we discussed this. I don't know if we mentioned team building exercises, but they are 
Everybody else has had two iterations of their yes. of their lists, at least two. Veerman have only had one iteration. They've only come out in uh, in fe- infestation. infestation. So they need another round to improve them, just like the Rebs did, just like the Asterians did. Yeah, yeah. And it'll it'll bring them up. They just need that round. The the so fear not, Veerman players. Hopefully they're listening and they'll improve these guys. Yeah, the, the moral of the story is they're shoddy now, but. There's there's potential. There's but. potential. If like Rob just said it the best today, the base is good. It's got a solid, yeah. solid foundation. They just need that one thing that it's not even necessarily a stat change or something. They just need that. Shouldn't say qual that point should go more. down. Maybe give them armor. They all should have scout. We were if thinking, anybody should have scout. It's Veerman because they should like be that. everywhere. So they should be sneaking around. They they should have scout for sure. Uh, yeah, the nightmares need. To be bigger size, they it's only tough, size like two. I think. I think they need tough or armor. Same with the uh, same with the. Uh, I, all the names are the same. I can never remember what name, names is the same. The problem is they don't have anything that can answer the specialists from any other faction. Yeah, their ranges are all really short. Their troops are are, are shoddy, but you'd think okay, one of their specialists should be uh, powerful enough to say match a Terraton or. Um, they should have a shooter in there that could possibly match a rainmaker, yeah. you know. But they, there's nothing. They're, there's not much AP. They're all the ranges. Nothing to bring to the table. Super short range. Uh, the things that are long range are, are hard to get on the board, like the wiener cannons and things like that. Like Coach said, it's hard to get lines of sight with those things because they they're a vehicle. They can't like at least the drones. My drones could go up, so they're on top of the building, get better lane, lines of sight. Yeah, because a vehicle needs a ramp, a drone mm-hmm. doesn't. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, or just make them cheaper. If you just made everybody super cheap, that would even it out, I think. We said during the team building exercise, coach was like, ah, even if they were two points cheaper each. But now... It needs to be even more than that. At, at the time, I was like, yeah, that probably works, because that would add an extra model to what the list, the 200-point list that we were doing. But one model with, with the stats change much, yeah. doesn't change. It, it, it just, you literally need double the models, I think. It, it, it literally just adds a more target-rich environment for your opponent. It's like when we were playtesting uh, zombies. We were like, they need to be tougher. We doubled the number of zombies. Are we allowed to say that? Because that was... Uh... The question is, are we in the book? I'm not sure. Okay. It, <laughs> if we're in the book, we can't say this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've yet to receive my Nexus Psy, so... We may or may not do playtesting... Playtested Nexus on I. Nexus I. We, we, we've done a lot of playtesting. We're on the inside track now. But, 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 but... Anyways. If you get Nexus I, our names may be in it, and we play playtesting. And, and if they have been, otherwise this is just conjecture. <laughs> but... This is a fantasy. This is a, a radio play. We said that play. there should be more zombies fighting. This is a radio play uh, put on, presented, uh, uh, fiction... At no way, in no way, would you be legally uh, held to any standard. I wouldn't think if, if perhaps we were. Uh, I think it's out now. I think the uh, the NDA is uh, done. Oh, yeah, we come we, sue us, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so we just doubled the zombies, and then it was like more even fight for yeah, because it's an even fight against Pathfinders, but against other races, it's not an even fight. Zombies are really wimpy. Hopefully, we don't know what the final will yeah, be. Well, that's at the, the, yeah, during the, the we were we were at the beginning. It was very very much like the original zombie rules, and you know we had some input in the here and there. We, who knows what's going to be the official? We will talk about it more once we get the book. We'll go through it yeah. and discuss it. And once I've consulted my lawyer, because right yeah. now I'm I'm wondering. We're not sure about the legal ramifications of our words. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Episode sixty three on the chain gang. We uh, here we are breaking <laughs> rocks. Hey, my name's John, and this is Frank. We're the new uh, hosts of uh, Dead Zone the podcast. <laughs> yeah, we had it gifted to us. Uh, <laughs> those other ge- those other schmoes are uh, they're doing some time in Leavenworth. <laughs> yeah, they traded a podcast for something in the commissary. Uh, the, the prisoners in the prison were in are now doing the podcast. Is that, is, that, is, that, is that the narrative you were going for? No, that's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, what were you doing? Because I think I was just thinking some mafioso that somehow ended up with the... <laughs> Mantic said the goons. Yeah, goon squad. <laughs> Who is it? Hired goons. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> we're here for your podcast. <laughs> okay. Both equally funny. Both comedy goals. Uh, both gems. Yeah. And uh, you, it both, feel free you to use choose, those too. Choose which, one you, choose which narrative you prefer. When Whichever you one made you laugh the most. Yeah. And we know you, you laughed at both of them, but you, you, 
whichever made you laugh the most. So yeah, on that high note, uh, join Luigi and Franco for the next episode of Dead Zone the Podcast. I've been Rob. And I'm still Jack. And we're going to jail. <laughs> Prison toilet wine. Thank you for listening to the Dead Zone Podcast. I have been your announcer, William Randolph Wintergreen. Visit the website, deadzonegame.podbean.com. Email your host at deadzonepodcast at gmail.com. On Twitter, you can follow the show at Dead Zone Podcast. The Dead Zone Podcast is a production of Vinland Old Time Radio Productions. You have been listening to the Dead Zone Podcast. And now, a word from the fine folks at Vinland Old Time Radio. Vinland Old Time Radio. Ah, oh, it is to laugh. Fast row! Boy, they're dirigible. Help a fellow Empire citizen out with you. It's a gavel. A haunted gavel. <laughs> Have you read The King in Yellow? Hello, William. I made the koala burgers. So, what's new? Are you insane? That better be a rhetorical question. And yes. For far too long. Uh, I once knew a Spaniard in Tarragonda who spoke in gibberish like you. Up, up, and escape! Oh, uh, that was terrible. I should be a god, and instead I'm stuck down here like a worm. She would tell me such wonderful stories. Dr. Deja Vu will return. Africa's a continent? It's with great protest. Sorry, Judge Pudding. Ooh, now that's some fine programming. Vinland Oldtime Radio dot Podbean dot com